Hello, this is Paris Underground Radio. My name is Annette Delu, and this is The Heart of You. Welcome to Episode 4, Crystal Magic. You might be asking, how can pretty rocks make my life better? Well, we are going to explore that in today's episode. When you look back on your childhood, we all have those prized possessions we had, those toys that you just never forget. For me, it was a little toy wooden Snoopy dog. It was my animal Muppet drum set, and my mom was a saint for even giving that to me. (laughs) And the last thing was my rock tumbler. I don't know how I actually got into the whole idea of tumbling stones and making them all polished and shiny. It was most likely a museum that I went to or something to that effect. But I was obsessed with rocks. I still am to this day. Every time I go to a different country, I pick a rock from that country and I bring it home with me. And so now I have this beautiful bowl on my coffee table that contains rocks from all of my travels. It's a really great way to bring home a souvenir without actually spending a whole lot of money as well as cluttering your house up with all kinds of things that you may not need. I got this rock tumbler when I was a kid. I was just so enamored with it and I wanted to get every sort of rock I could possibly get my hands on and polish it up and make it all shiny and I was really interested in the different types of rocks and the different types of stones and crystals. This interest I have had in crystals has extended over the entire period of this current lifetime. Fast forward to the present day. I come across all kinds of people who are wearing necklaces and rings and jewelry that are made out of crystals. And oftentimes I will approach them and say, oh, that's really beautiful lapis lazuli, or that's a really beautiful labradorite stone. And half the time people are pretty confused about what I'm talking about. Simply they chose that piece of jewelry because they just liked it. They weren't paying attention to what type of stone it was or what kind of healing properties these stones could potentially possess. I always love those small moments in connection when I do mention something about a stone someone is wearing and they say, oh, thank you. I got it because I was really attracted to it. I'm working on my solar plexus chakra or something like that. I know it sounds super cheesy, but it really lights me up inside to hear people really connect with their crystals and and really understand what they are there for. At the end of this episode, I'm hoping you will have a much clearer view of what crystals can do for you, as well as how to choose the right crystal. To make it easy, I like to put crystals into two separate categories. The first category that we are going to speak of is the cleansing category. So cleansing crystals are ones that you would put around your house or one that you would wear on your body in order to consistently cleanse your energy field or your apartment or your house of anything that does not belong there. So any sort of negative energies, any sort of energies that maybe have passed through or were part of the house's history, you can really do a lot of good with these type of clearing crystals. Some examples of basic clearing crystals would be selenite or clear quartz. I have a bunch of selenite wands all over my apartment in various different places, by the doors, by the windows, by my workspace, and they simply just sit there and absorb any sort of energy that needs to be cleared. The one thing about cleansing crystals is that you do need to clear the crystal itself every once in a while. Typically, I do it about once a month. I'll take all of my cleansing crystals and I will either put them in direct sunlight or I will take my Palo Santo or my sage and I will say a little cleansing prayer over the crystals. Something very simple like, 
Thank you for clearing these crystals. I clear these crystals of any lower or negative energies. I also clear them of any energy that does not belong to me. That is all you need to do. So you can clear these crystals and then set them back out for the next month. A couple of other clearing crystals you can use are black obsidian or black tourmaline. Now think of these two as the psychic vacuum. (laughs) These crystals are really going to absorb any sort of negative energy. Black tourmaline is also really great to put near your computer or your electronics because it actually helps balance any sort of interference. I always have a piece of black tourmaline by my computers and by my equipment that I use for work, and it works really, really well to sort of balance the energy around your electronics. Especially if you are a light worker, if you are somebody who works with energy on a regular basis, Energy and electronics don't really work very well together. Your black obsidian or your black tourmaline are also going to act as grounding crystals. So they can help ground your electronics. They can help ground the energy around your field so your light bulbs don't start burning out, so your computer doesn't start crashing, things like that. There are a few other cleansing type crystals or clearing type crystals You can simply pick up a a book or look online and Google cleansing crystals, and I'm sure you will come up with a myriad of different kinds. These are the most common and probably the most inexpensive you can find. I actually got a whole bunch of selenite discs at Passage Brady in Paris here at a, a beautiful Indian spice store if you've never been to it called Velan. That is V-E-L-A-N, and that is 83 Passage Brady in the 10th arrondissement. Velan is actually really great for incense as well as Palo Santo, anything that you need for any a further cleansing for your space. They have all kinds of options for you. The second category is the absolute fun part. These are the specific crystals that are meant to help you with certain things. For example, if you take kunzite or rose quartz or pink tourmaline, that is going to help activate your heart chakra. They are, all three of these are a pink stone. They represent divine love and emotional healing. If you are really needing to open up your heart space, if you are needing to open your heart chakra, these are crystals that I would highly recommend getting. And if you have some really deep emotional healing to do in regards to love, as well as romance, I would recommend getting a necklace because that pink stone is going to be very close to your heart chakra. Another example would be Tiger Eye. Tiger Eye was one of the first crystals I ever picked out. I actually didn't know why I chose it. It just sort of called to me. And then when I got home, I actually looked it up to see what it meant. And it was balancing, balancing of the solar plexus, being able to see both sides of a story, finding common ground and mental clarity. So clearly at that moment, that was something that I really needed. However, I didn't know that I needed it. (laughs) So the body is such a beautiful vessel to be able to direct you to the places and things that you really, really need. That brings us to how do you choose a crystal? Because we all have a myriad of things we are dealing with on any given day. You could have 10,000 crystals for 10,000 different things you are working on. Not to be overwhelmed, let's start with a very simple way to choose the right crystal. I personally like to go to a crystal shop in person and simply just look at all the crystals. Sort of peruse them and pick one up and feel it in your hand Sometimes you can actually feel the energetic vibration of the crystal in your hand. 
I would say that whatever crystal you are drawn to, pick it up, hold it in your hand, see what feeling you get from that crystal. If it's something that's really positive, then I would say that is the crystal for you right now. Then maybe later on, look up what that crystal is meant for, and then you can charge it as well as utilize it on a regular basis once you realize what that crystal is for. There is a beautifully hidden crystal shop called Mineral do Brasil, and it's here in Paris in the 8th arrondissement. It's a little difficult to find, but you can look it up online and find the exact address. Depending on the time of day, it could be completely packed or it could be completely empty. But there are a lot of crystals in this shop in a very compact space. It is 100% worth it though because their prices are really good and they have a lot of crystals that you may not find elsewhere. There are many other crystal shops in the city of Paris. This one I find is the most affordable. We will be right back with The Heart of You after a word from our sponsors. If I ask you what it's like to be a Parisian writer, what do you imagine? Drinking noisette after noisette in a noisy cafe? Jotting down lines in your bedside journal while your lover fetches you fresh croissant? Stumbling down the streets overflowing with prose and red wine like Hemingway? Well, now's your chance to find out. My name is Jennifer Garrity, and I'm host of the Story Time in Paris podcast. In each episode, I chat with a writer with a French connection. The twist? The questions come from you, the writer's biggest fans and followers. Then our beloved writers will read us an excerpt from their books. So cozy up with a noisette, a croissant, or whatever's your pleasure, and settle in for Story Time in Paris, Paris Underground Radio. Welcome back to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. Now that you have purchased your crystals, we are ready to clear and charge them. Just like a hard drive on a computer, your crystals have been containing and gathering information for the entire length of its existence. So we really do want to clear the crystal of any other energy that is not yours. We will first clear the crystal and then we will charge it. There are several ways to clear a crystal. The first way is to put it in direct sunlight. Think about putting a crystal in direct sunlight as a complete hard drive wipe. It is going to clear literally everything out of that crystal, which sometimes you may or may not want to do. If you have been working with a crystal for a long time and you have been infusing it with your own energy, you may not want to do a hard wipe on that crystal. So if you don't, there are other ways in which you can clear that particular crystal. If you are just getting a crystal from a store, putting a crystal in sunlight as a hard wipe is always a good idea. The second way you can clear a crystal that is a little less absolute is to take one of your selenite crystals, which is a clearing crystal, or your clear quartz, and place the crystal you purchased right next to or on top of the selenite quartz crystal. The third way that you can clear your crystals is through sage or palo santo. If you have a bundle of mugwort or if you have a bundle of various different herbs, anything will really work. It just depends on what you prefer. A lot of people don't like the smell of sage. They think it's too strong. I personally prefer palo santo wood. But it is entirely up to you what type of scent you prefer. If you would prefer not to use smoke at all, you can simply use your intention. Imagine a beautiful light, a bright divine light coming from the heavens and coming from your heart space and allowing that beautiful light to infuse inside that crystal. Simply that intention will be enough to clear the crystal of anything that does not belong to you. Next, we are going to charge this crystal. 
You may ask me why we would want to charge a crystal when crystals have inherent properties on their own, which they absolutely do. So let's take kunzite, for example. It is a pink stone. And as I said before, it is really resonating and helping with emotional healing and your heart chakra. Those are the basic properties. If you look up kunzite on a website or if you pick up a crystal book, which I highly recommend, they are very useful. There are a lot of various different meanings. There are also a lot of other crystals that will harmonize with this crystal to create a stronger energy. When you charge your crystal, look within your heart, ask the crystal what support it is giving you. Put the crystal in your left hand. So your left hand is your receiving hand. Your right hand is your giving hand. When we charge crystals, we want to use the receiving hand and simply set the intention that this crystal is going to help heal my heart chakra. This crystal is going to help me heal any emotional wounds that I have in regards to romantic relationships or whatever it is that you would like this crystal to help you with. Once you are finished charging it, then you are done. Whenever you would like to feel the energy of this crystal, simply pick it up and put it in your right hand, which is your giving hand. Put it in your right hand, then simply meditate on those properties that you originally infused the crystal with. Another option is some people really like to put the crystal on the chakra that it is helping. So if it is a heart chakra stone, you can place that stone right by your heart chakra when you're doing your meditation. I have also known people to have crystals for various different things. If you have a crystal that is going to help you with public speaking, then have that crystal in your pocket or in your hand while you are giving the speech. If you need courage to open up and have a conversation with somebody, meditate on that prior to having the conversation with the crystal in your hand. And then keep it with you while you are having the conversation with this person. This is one of the reasons why I really do like what you call pocket crystals. They are very small and they can fit in your pocket or your purse or your hand. The large crystals are, of course, absolutely stunning and gorgeous and they make a beautiful display in your home. I highly recommend you get those simply if it's just something that you would like to have in your home for your energy, something that you would just love to look at. They are a little bit more impractical when it comes to everyday use. So if you would like to use it outside of your home, it's a little hard to bring a 40 pound stone somewhere. I would highly recommend pocket crystals to start out. First of all, it's definitely much more affordable. Second of all, it allows you to try different crystals as well. The next topic would be, can crystals be overused? And the answer is yes, they can. Crystals, like anything else, can be utilized so much that their energy gets depleted. I have had this happen to me a couple of times where either the crystal will crack or it will literally just disappear. I had this happen recently with a pendulum of mine. I had a pendulum that was made from lapis lazuli, and I used it on, on a daily basis. I don't ever leave the house with my pendulum, so I was pretty sure that there was no possible way it could have been lost anywhere else. But I have checked every corner of this apartment, and it is no longer here. It was almost as if it literally sprouted legs and walked away. <laughs> And I think it was saying, okay, you know what? I'm done. I do not want to do this anymore. I'm out of here. So basically, it uh, it disappeared for a reason. And you'll find that crystals do that when either it no longer serves you or you are done working on that particular lesson. The crystal might 
literally just disappear from your life. Something to keep in mind with crystals as well. Every single one has its own energy and its own vibration. Some have a really soft energy and some have a really buzzing, vibrant energy. It's almost as if you have had three cups of coffee. (laughs) There are stones out there such as Moldavite, which would give you this particular effect. I would definitely take precautions if you are going to get jewelry with very high vibrational stones such as Moldavite. Because I have actually heard of a lot of people having really bad headaches or things like that if they wear jewelry or stones that are really high vibrational crystals or stones and they're not used to having them that close to their body. If you do decide to get a really high vibrational stone like Moldavite, I would recommend getting a very small piece as well as having it near you and not necessarily directly on your person until you can get used to the energy and the frequency of the stone. The last thing I would like to mention is that energy is always flowing. When you have a crystal and somebody picks it up and says, oh, this is really cool. Oh, what do you use this for? The second they touch that crystal, That is their energy that is being infused in the crystal. You don't have to be really upset that somebody else has touched your crystal. (laughs) Just make sure that you understand that once that person has touched it, that you will need to clear that energy. Again, you don't need to do the hard reset on that crystal if you have already been infusing your beautiful personal energy into it. You can simply do a light clearing with your intention, or you can utilize selenite again. If you have any questions about the topic of crystals or anything else we have discussed in the previous episodes, please send us an email at hello at parisundergroundradio.com. Our last episode of the season for The Heart of You will be a listener Q&A. If you really have a burning question, feel free to write to us and I will answer those questions at the end of the season. Thank you so much for joining me today and I cannot wait to share with you our next episode in which I will be interviewing Angie D. Canales, who is a true spirit medium and quantum hypnosis healer. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to walking this journey with you and pointing the way on your spiritual journey. If you are interested in learning more about me and the sessions that I do, feel free to go to my website at infinitesoullove.com. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I post daily tarot card readings there at infinitesoullove1111. If you are interested in listening to more podcasts like this one, don't forget to head to Paris Underground Radio at parisundergroundradio.com.